in the chakra system, part two. Why would certain beneficial drugs be illegal? What drugs could actually be healthy or promote positive changes throughout the human species? Okay. LSD. LSD was discovered by accident. And interestingly enough, its effects were so remarkably powerful and entertaining that it was continued to be manufactured and studied. Due to the potency and to the dangers of addiction and irresponsible people as the majority of the world is, it would not be wise to regularly distribute this drug. However, even bigger than the levels of danger, as if accessing more of your mind wouldn't already be somewhat dangerous, if we operate on a low spectrum, the majority of us, then increasing the power to something would be foolish. Think Tim the Tool Man Taylor of Tool Time on Home Improvement. He had power to everything, and what happened? Catastrophe. Every time. But it didn't stop him from wanting to make things bigger and better and stronger. Now, provided that they would work, it would probably work, but for a short duration. Keep this in mind. If you choose to go against all of my advice, I don't advocate the use of any drugs or any breaking of any laws. And this video is strictly for educational purposes. However, there was a time where I'd once experimented with acid. My very first time was unlike any of the things that I was told it should be. It was enlightening. The anxiety was real, incredible. As someone who already experiences anxiety, that's saying something. Um, it was as if I was connected with everything. And I proved all of my understandings to be accurate. From astral traveling from my own body, checking out the time on a watch from people 50 feet away, listening to their conversations, coming back before manually walking over there, to test if this was illusion. Among thousands of other experiments, First, um, I guess because I like to control my body and my reality, I had no effects. I was in company, um, separating from them. Uh, an hour, two hours of being on my own, I started to experience different effects. The first was the onset of anxiety. Complete sheer panic, but because of the mentality and everything being enhanced, it was sort of worth it. What would I do if it wasn't anyway? And... I felt connected with everything. Whatever I chose to think about or feel was increased a thousandfold. It wasn't tripping. I didn't see things that weren't there, although I did have one vision experience of the past of where I was however many years ago, and what it looked like, what was different. And that was very fascinating, and it was a lot of information that came in a flash and gone as quickly, but I retained all of this information. I also discovered the benefits of memory enhancement for this drug. How, um, if one were to take this and receive a lot of information very quickly, that they may still retain this information with minimal effort. This, I believe, has occurred due to what people call the trails effect. I was playing with a laser light, and I moved in a circle, and observed that I could see it move in a second circle, just a split second beyond itself. And that told me that this would be a great memory enhancement drug. Of course, I didn't continue to just experiment with this drug, but it's important to note that it could have beneficial purposes. In fact, um, people were considering giving mushrooms and LSD to clients in therapy because it made them more susceptible to take the advice and the direction given to them. Of course. I mean, if it is like some hallucination or some big dream, then that means you're in a suggestible state broadcasting somewhere in the theta range. Drug number two. Shrooms, psilocybin cubensis, magic, magic, mushroom, mushroom, mushroom. I've never done magic mushrooms personally. However, I've seen a plethora of research that suggests that it has rejuvenating properties. Apart from the obvious less intensity than LSD would have, magic mushrooms repair brain damage. They actually recreate broken neurological passageways. Can you imagine the possibility of helping one with Alzheimer's or some other degenerative brain disease by giving them something, sure, 
hallucinogenic, but what if you were in a safe and medicinal environment? You were protected and you had doctors and staff on command. It would be perfectly applicable and understandable to give someone a drug that has been used safely, moreover, for thousands of years. That could actually regenerate and restore the brain. Incredible, yeah? It may also be interesting to note, you know, marijuana. Marijuana activates the third eye. It keeps you aware. If you were aware, you wouldn't be so easily programmed and manipulated. There's a big reason why it keeps getting pushed off. And every time it gets better, the majority tries to keep shoving it down. There's two main reasons. One is the scare of misinformation that's been spread since uh, HJN Slinger. Um, and it's interesting. I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. <laughs> too many ideas that support this topic come to mind. Um, it's interesting because the other reason would be basically that you're not as susceptible. You are receptible, not susceptible. You're not easily pushed and programmed. You're weak. You're aware. You're relaxed enough and feeling healthy and good about yourself enough. And your brain waves have slowed down how fast they produce that wave enough to comprehend and absorb more information. This means that if someone was aiming to manipulate you, there's less of a possibility, unless you overdid it, made yourself too slow, that it would not work. There are other drugs similarly that are pushed for the same reasons. And the particular reason, of course, as an umbrella over all of it, is manipulation and control. Coffee. I absolutely love coffee. Coffee actually lowers the frequency of your body to an incredibly unhealthy state. Such a low frequency rhythm, in fact, that you're susceptible to illnesses like cancer. And the ways that a cell phone broadcasts at frequencies that within two minutes have reduced the brain blood barrier enough to stop protecting itself from signals passing through that could be harmful or helpful. The same thing happens to your body when you even hold a cup of coffee, shooting your body down within seconds, making you more vulnerable to diseases and ailments. You should look up sometime frequency sickness and try to keep an open mind and look into the more actual science of it instead of just an idea and you will discover that it is more true than you really want to believe. Tobacco, of course, shoots you down. It uh, obviously is very terrible for the lungs. Thousands of carcinogens. People commonly misunderstand that uh, rolling their own cigarettes is better for them. <laughs> Why would they not think of that? And promoting an unhealthy product. Why would it be any more healthy in a different form? That's absolutely absurd. It's just as unhealthy. Studies have been done. There are a few less chemicals that are manually added by certain cigarette companies, but the majority of them are still there. And you have alcohol shooting you down into the lower chakras as well, encouraging lower based emotions, baser instincts, your animal brain being activated, your lower brain, helping produce rage and aggression and emotion, passion. Of course, these drugs, some can be beneficial. Now, why would we, in the way that the world is ran, in this medicinal age, in the age of money and power and control, would we promote good products? Of course we wouldn't. We would promote a whole fucking crew of people selling you temporary symptomatic cures. Curing the symptom will not cure the problem. So you might want to evaluate yourself and this indoctrinated edu education we've all received through different varying means. And actually stopping to think from time to time. And doing your own research and your own experimentation, if you will, on why things are the way they are. You've been lied to about many things. Now here's a fun thing to add to the end of this. Since the majority of people know that marijuana isn't this harmful drug that they think it is. And no, I'm not high right now. I'm just kind of tired. <laughs> um, I found a pamphlet in the doctor's office that said, Beware of the marijuana smoker. Does your friend get smelly? Have trouble remembering things that just happened? Encourage them to seek professional help. Your friend might be smoking marijuana. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. I'd include more in the descriptive pamphlet if I had the time. Maybe even the picture. But I'm running low on seconds, and I think YouTube still limits us to 10 minutes if we're not sponsored. Well, I'm Kevin Cass, and I hope you enjoyed this very informal video. Ta-ta.